Hi, my name is Jeremy, and this is my hands-on review of the 2024 Model Y Performance. This vehicle has been my daily driver for months now. If you are like me, you are watching this because you are interested in buying a Tesla Model Y. We'll take delivery of a Model Y soon, or just took ownership and watching all you can on this best-selling compact SUV. This is probably the first time I have purchased a vehicle within only hours of thinking about it. At a total cost of $42,964 after the federal tax credit, the deciding factor was the opportunity to transfer my full self-driving package from my old 2018 Model 3 Performance at trade-in. At the time of this review, that is an $8,000 value. Although the real horsepower is not given by Tesla, I have watched a few videos and the results vary. One video had a Model Y performance on a dyno and it achieved 508 wheeled horsepower. Tesla claims acceleration to 60 miles per hour in 3.5 seconds with rollout and a top speed of 155. I have not tested the top speed, but my zero to 60 pulls have been around 3.8 seconds without rollout. If the motor setup is the same as the Model 3 performance, then these motors put out a combined 520 wheeled horsepower and 650 Newton meters of torque or 479 foot pounds as tested by Misha Sharudan. You can find the link to his video in the section below. I am sure you have heard this before. It's most optimal to charge at home in small increments between 20 to 80% daily on a level two charger, charge all the way up prior to long distance trips and avoid totally discharging the battery or going under 10%. Supercharge to 80% on trips. Charging to 100% is harder on the battery and wastes valuable travel time. I recommend finding destination chargers at hotels during overnight stays if you want to charge to 100% for the next day. If not using the car for extended amounts of time, charge to 50% and leave it plugged in. If you have a LFP battery, then plugging in is optional. Just leave the car at 50% charge. Turn off sentry mode and do not constantly check on your vehicle by swiping down in the app. This will cause your Tesla to use unnecessary energy. Do these things and you will increase the battery's longevity and mitigate range loss. The credit for all this information goes to Engineering Explained. You can check out that video in the link in the description. The interior is spartan and minimalistic. Some like it, others don't. As someone who used to love buttons and switches everywhere, I actually don't mind it as much as I thought I would. The last non-Tesla I owned was a 2021 BMW X5 xDrive 45e, fully loaded. If there was a car that had a button for everything, that was it. I kind of miss the interior of the BMW, but on the positive side, it makes for easy cleaning and less things to break. Speaking of something I miss, the heads-up display. Front seats are not much different than the Model 3s, but since they are raised up, a lot more comfortable driving experience can be had. More space, more legroom. The rear arm rests are wider. Headroom and legroom, a non-factor in the front or back. Rear reclining seats take advantage of the huge amount of space a hatchback provides. The new color is called Stealth Gray, and it is slightly darker compared to the previous color called Midnight Silver Metallic. What do you think of the new color? Let me know in the comments what your opinion is. It sits on 21 inch wheels with all weather Michelin Pilot Sports. They offer excellent traction while not sacrificing longevity. Treadwear is 540. In my opinion, these are the best tires you can get for your Tesla off the track. I am divided on the exterior. Although the conservative lines and minimalistic design makes it look timeless, I always do a once over on all cars I purchase, especially Tesla, since panel gaps are a thing. I believe it is safe to say 
that this may be a thing of the past, however, fit and finish have definitely come a long way since 2018. My old Model 3 made creaking noises from body torsion anytime I was entering or exiting my driveway. The new front and rear one-piece castings have greatly improved the vehicle's rigidity. I have also noticed quite a bit less cabin noise when driving at highway speeds, thanks in no small part to the double-pane glass. In my opinion, ride quality is the one weak point of the Model Y, at least for now. The lack of adaptive suspension makes for a very hard ride, especially on those 21s and the slightly lowered performance model. The good news is, since the Gen 2 Model 3, performance now has adaptive suspension, it is safe to say the Project Juniper Model Y will also. It is expected to arrive in Q2 of 2025, so if you are in the market, you may want to hold off for the second generation Y. I figure the trade-off will be savings and incentives you would otherwise get for buying current inventory. Although there is an off-road setting, do not take it over anything more than a dirt or gravel road. It's not designed to take on the trails like Cybertruck or Rivian. The frunk of the Y can actually fit a carry-on bag. The biggest impact on cargo space for the Model Y is the hatchback design, giving it over 30 cubic feet of cargo space with the rear seats in place, and over 70 with them folded down. When you include the compartment under the trunk space and frunk, you are at 76 cubic feet, more than most of the compact SUV segment. Full self-driving. I have been using FSD since September of last year, so I am a relative newcomer to this software suite. Although version 11 was better than standard autopilot, it would suffer from not keeping the lane when entering or exiting a roundabout, jerk the steering wheel at times as though confused, and make a wrong turn or exit at times, despite the routed directions. Enter version 12, gone are the 300,000 plus lines of C++ computer code. Instead, it is a self-learning AI that uses a neural net trained on millions of video clips. My experience with version 12 fell slightly short of my admittedly high initial expectations. Driving too close to the curb resulted in many interventions on my part. It took quite a bit of time to adjust, but eventually I have come to trust it. And with every update, this software suite instills confidence in its abilities compared to the previous build as well as any other manufacturer's semi-autonomous endeavors. You can actually set a destination and the car will take you there from start to finish without the need to intervene. Simply amazing. There are several YouTube videos done by others showcasing how good it is, but it is not without its faults. I find myself stepping on the accelerator at times to force it to move faster. When traveling through Toronto a few months ago, it missed a few off-ramps. By now, everyone should have heard about the supercharging network. But just in case you are new to EVs, for the past decade, Tesla has been building out their fast charging infrastructure, with the most recent numbers showing that they have surpassed 50,000 chargers across the world and continue to add every week. Seems every few months, another automaker enters into contract with Tesla to utilize their charging infrastructure. The most recent earnings call has exemplified the financial acumen of Tesla as they continue to dominate the EV landscape. Sentry mode is one of the most useful tools ever offered by a car company. Aside from the obvious advantage of having cameras that record in real time all around the car, which come in very handy if you are ever involved in an accident, the ability to check on your parked car when away from anywhere in the world is truly an evolution in car security. My favorite feature is the ability to check on our mini schnauzer when left in the car. The advent of the four combined camera views 
to create an overhead view of your vehicle has definitely revolutionized parking. If you have owned an older Tesla, then you are familiar with how the car detects the environment with ultrasonic sensors. At first, I thought the virtualized environment Tesla Vision offers would be subpar to an overhead camera view around the vehicle plus parking sensors, but I now find it to be much more helpful and innovative. As objects come into the 360 degree view of the vehicle, the car creates a virtualized environment where it detects last known positions and even remembers object locations after leaving its view. This virtualized object then changes color the nearer you get. Actually, I think it is better than cameras as the camera creates only a two-dimensional image of objects around the car, causing certain objects to blend in with the background or be in a spot not seen by the ultrasonic sensor. The idea of a car updating like Windows or Mac OS was seen as a novel idea but is now revolutionary to the car market. For decades, cars' infotainment systems could never be improved upon without buying the newest model of the vehicle. Some offered a clunky way of updating their aging maps system using either a DVD or proprietary flash drive but no internet connection. Then Tesla came along and not only allowed real-time updates of Google Maps for free, but the ability to push a whole new feature, or UI, to the vehicle. For instance, in the December 2021 update, they introduced camera turn signal, which the left or right camera would display, activated by the turn signal. It also allowed remote viewing of sentry cameras. Just brilliant. The interface is without equal in the automotive industry and became the standard by which everyone else built their capacitive touch display infotainment systems. The speed, intuitiveness, and responsiveness of Tesla's huge touchscreen, combined with innovative updates, sets it apart and truly is a game changer. It's akin to when the car industry went from a five-speed manual transmission to a dual-clutch automatic. Final thoughts. I have owned many vehicles in my time, and ever since I purchased my first Tesla in 2017, I have been unable to go back to any other car manufacturer. Will I stay loyal to Tesla as the only car manufacturer for the foreseeable future? The answer is an emphatic yes.